Welcome back to a vlog. It's been a while. Thought I'd check in and see what's going on in the world of the Smiths. Some people may be aware that I've been getting the garden sorted. We were talking about decking and patios for ages and stuff like that. Finally, uh, the start of May, it started getting done. We basically wanted to have an area for Mia to have a swing set. This is where it's all come from. So we had to rip up all of the decking at the back, which turned out to be a huge lump of concrete. So rather than getting rid of all the concrete, we've gone half and half. So half decking and half um, lower down for, for Mia's swing set, which is now done. So basically, I can't drive a digger. Got a couple of guys in to help. Initially, it was going to be like seven days. And then when we hit the concrete, it was going to be like maybe a couple of days on top. Problem was, as um, time went on, it was quite clear that um, hills were being dragged, if I'm being honest. And we actually did this on a day rate with the guys. In the end, we ended up paying for like 11 days. And ideally, we wanted a garden, a front and back decking. We wanted a play area for me. We wanted new fences put in. We wanted new grass laid, gravel down the side by the shed. Towards the 10th day, I had a falling out with the guy saying, we're not going to get this done. And I think in his head, we had an endless pot of money. I think he felt that oh, I could just keep charging him over 200 quid a day. And it just mounted up and up and up to the point of where it was like, wow. We're not going to have a garden, but if we are, we're going to have to pay thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds for it. And we actually said to him, we don't want everything done anymore because we're just going to pay too much money for them to do it. It's taken too long. We just want a front deck and a back deck, somewhere comfortable to be able to sit. Um, we'll sort the grass, we'll sort the fences, we'll sort the climbing frame set, we'll sort the uh, gravel down the side, we'll sort with the plant, we'll sort everything. Just do us a front and back decking. Day 11 they came back, they put a frame in for this end. We were told it would be done, but it wasn't. And we were left with, um, yeah, one back deck that was done, not to the greatest of standards. I hold my hands up, we did um, keep some of the decking from the previous one. We flipped it and realised that the boards were quite nice underneath. So we flipped them over, we're going to give it a good old jet wash and, and stain it. And I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But the front decking just outside the door here, um, the frame was done, but the deck wasn't done. And they said... It's going to be another day and a half and it's just more money that we're going to have to pay out. So I agreed, found some more money and they didn't turn up. They didn't come back. It was never the same after we had that argument. It was a bit, mm. And I think he didn't like the fact that I criticised him. I just kept adding days and days and days and it wasn't fair. It wasn't fair for us to just keep paying out. So I'll try and find a fact of what we were left with. Two young kids just left like that. And I wouldn't mind it if it's the back decking, it's the front decking that we can't get out into the garden. Got a balance on these frames and beams with nails poking up everywhere. It weren't, it weren't fair. And people that do that to families or anyone, you know, anyone that doesn't keep to their word. Absolute scumbags. I wonder if he'll watch this. Who knows? But he didn't turn up when he said he would and he hasn't even attempted to call text or anything and to be fair i didn't reach out to him because i thought prick you know what i'm not going to beg him to come back i'm going to find someone that's actually going to do the job properly now you might say decking's easy to do smith i'd rather pay someone to do it properly than me wing it obviously these tradesmen are, it's what they do but some of them mug you off and you've got to be really careful so so this video is not sponsored by trust the trader which it was it'd be perfect but i've got another couple of guys coming this saturday to finish the job so uh thank you john thank you so much john but yeah let me show you where we're at so as you can see the decking is still as a frame but at the back there I've built a little park for Mia. But she's had a good swing on that. She loves it up there. There's the other decking. I'll show you why it's not to good standards. John that came round, he said, are you sure this guy's a carpenter? Because he's done it all wrong. Shed's all painted. Got some nice gravel down there. So that's coming, that's coming along quite nicely over there. We used to have a really crappy blue door here. That's all painted grey now. So that's, uh, that's, that's had a touch up. Yeah, much better over here. Much better. These sleepers I used to have over here running along, but I've taken them out and we're going to have that to separate um, grass when we get it and wood chips. So that's all coming along nicely. Here's Mia's little swing. She loves it. She's also got a slide. Also loves that. Here's the fence I'm building. We've got some planters at the back. Obviously, this needs to be filled up properly with topsoil and stuff. But um, here's the fence at the back, the little slats. Uh, it's coming along all right. Got a load of materials to go down for the new deck uh, when John gets here on Saturday. And this is the new deck in, which was previously old deck in. Um, the problem with it is, uh, especially on the steps, they've left a big gap there. He was telling me about the steps and how mitering them the wrong way can cause them to rot really quickly. So this is obviously cut out this way and rainwater can just seep into that and rot it really quickly. Same up here as well. So we could replace these. Tran doesn't know it yet, but I've actually paid for more decking to completely rip that out and gut it out and get it redone with brand new decking. Because what we had to do was flip it for this new one. I don't really like the design on this. I prefer... Not this one, but this one. This is much nicer. So I've ordered more, and then like I say, even more's come in to finish that one there. So they're going to be matching decks. We've spent all this money. I just felt, you know, let's get it right. Tran bless us, get all plants ready. Got some lavender, got some star jasmine. These are nice, I don't know what they're called. I do know, but I can't think of the name off the top of my head. Vibrant green. Yeah, all the fences are this gray color now. I feel like green stands out really nice on the gray background there, rather than brown. Same over there, we painted those ones. That fence there is being replaced with this one, going to paint that. Obviously, it's our neighbour's one. We're giving it to them. Flip it around. Paint the back when it's in. Wheelbarrow. Ah, so yeah. As you can see, when these decks are sorted, I think we're pretty much on the home straight. Just need to get the grass done. Get the barbecue up there. Get the burgers on the go. Get the halloumi on the go. Get the sausages, corn on the cob. Whatever you want. You know, Smith's got it. 
we'll sort it. We'll have a lovely barbecue. But that decking out the front there, which has just been framed, we've sat with it for like a month. It's not been great. Especially in this warm weather where we wanted to enjoy the garden. Obviously there's worse things going on in the world, but when you pay a load of money to actually get nothing, it's actually uh, quite gutting. There's so many dodgy traders out there, so uh, just be careful. Use someone that you can trust, because unfortunately we learned the hard way. I did actually start a vlog for that. Got some golden footage of me not being able to operate a digger. And also Mia just being really clever for two years old. Let's check out Mia's drawing. What are you drawing, Mia? A kite. You're drawing a kite? I can see that. I mean, that's actually well clever. You've got the kite at the top and then the, the string. That's really good. Um, Mia, can you draw me a circle? Draw me a circle. Yeah! Mia, can you draw me a triangle? Oh my god. She's two years old. Literally two years old. Mia, you're a genius. Should we do the alphabet? Ready? A, B, C, D. Well done. I don't really know where she is in terms of her like uh, development, but I feel like she's like a two year old. A two year old can just read off the alphabet. A two year old can draw a kite and a triangle and a square and a circle and whatever. I want to draw concrete. You want to draw concrete? Oh, you're going to help out today, are you? You're going to help out in the garden? You are beautiful and clever. You're my daughter and I love you to bits. I'm a baby. <laughs> right, okay, brilliant. So that's pretty much us up to date. Um, I'll catch you in a bit. Uh, I left you yesterday and... I just... I left you yesterday, didn't I? Nursery. Oh, you're going this way. Okay, two seconds. I, I left you yesterday... I'm going to nursery. Okay. I left you yesterday on this sofa, in this grey top. We had a Chinese. And got messy in Cheerios too. You had some Cheerios just now, didn't you? And get so messy as well. It got so messy, didn't it? Tell you who else who got messy. Daddy last night spilled sweet and sour sauce down him. Didn't he, Zach? Hello. You want to hold his hand? What a beautiful moment. Do you love your brother? Yeah. Is he your best friend? Mummy come out Zach's tummy. No, Zach came out of mummy's tummy. Come out mummy's tummy. That's right. Is Zach your best friend? Yeah. Yeah? Is, dad, is daddy your best friend? Yeah. Is mummy your best friend? Yeah. But who's, who's the bestest, bestest friend? Uh, Zach. Oh, great. Zach's bringing your camera. Zach's got a camera. Stop it, Zach. So what are you doing today, Mia? Where are you going? I'm going to nursery. Oh, and, and what are you learning at nursery at the moment? Uh, uh, I'm going to soft play. Soft play? Yeah. Do you get to do, um, go down the slide? Yeah. And do you get to... Chuck all of the, the little balls around. Yeah. Yeah? I threw them in the ball pit. You threw them in the ball pit, did you? And what else do you do at nursery? I do cross eyes. You do cross eyes? Oh, Mia, yeah, do your cross eyes. Go on. And Zach's pulling the camera. Zach's pulling the camera. It's okay, I got it. Yeah, Mia, go on. Do, do your cross eyes. <laughs> <laughs> go on, Mia, do it again. Do it one more time. Do your cross eyes. Ready? <laughs> You're a funny girl. Oh, they can. One more time, otherwise you go blind. Ready? Whoa, that was. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. This is normally the the morning routine, just making milk. Um, it's last night's Chinese. This isn't the regular, by the way. But sweet and sour sauce. I'm just so messy. Yep, that is the regular. I'll be honest. It's normally a little bit more chaos, but these guys are playing nicely together. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> is he tickling you? You be careful you don't fall on him. Yeah, you look after him. Yeah. Should we make him laugh? <laughs> Meanwhile, outside garden is just, yeah, same as it was yesterday. We wait. We wait. I had a haircut and they've uh, they've mucked it up somewhat. I was liking it a bit longer on top. They've given me sort of, a, yeah, I don't know what it is. Just a very <laughs> squared off edge. Um, not a fan. I will be wearing my hat. For the foreseeable future again. Anyway, I'm just upstairs doing a little bit of editing, but tonight I've got a live stream on the go. It's uh, powered by Utility Watch and Win France versus Germany. We've already done two of these. Uh, we did Italy versus um, Turkey on the opening day, and then yesterday we did Scotland versus Czech Republic, where we witnessed that ridiculous halfway line goal from uh, Sheik. He was that good; they should name the country after him. Sheik Republic. Oh dear.
So right now I've got a couple of Palmer's videos to edit down, so I'm going to do that. And then we're going to pick up the little girl, the little Mia from nursery. What's going on my friends? Welcome to another day. And today I am, where am I going? I am Cambridge bound today. You know, it's in the back I've got a, a, a kid's slide and, and a various other bits. I'm, I'm due a dump. Not me personally, but I'm due to go to the dump with this car. Take the second exit onto the A130 towards Stansted. All right, cool. So yeah, we're due to go there, but right about now, as I say, Cambridge bound, um, because I am about to pick up one of the rarest sought after football shirts that you can find on the market. Not that you will find them on the market. Past these lights, then at the roundabout, take the second exit onto the A130 towards Stansted. Okay, okay. Every so often one pops up and it goes for a lot of money. I'm going to pick one up. At the roundabout, Fine. Okay. Right. In half a mile, Stansted. Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> I'm gonna go and get a Dutch 1988 shirt. I'm just trying to say something and bloody Siri keeps popping up. I'm gonna go and pick up a 1988 Dutch shirt. The orange one is it, very, very rare. And the person I'm getting it off just happens to have two. The roundabout, take the third exit onto S6 Regiment Way towards Stansted. Sure. Some of you might have seen it on Twitter, but the person I'm gonna go and see is, of course, Ellis from Away Days. Uh, Ellis from Away Days, ladies and gentlemen, to take it away. Shut up! Hello. That right there is the goods. How did you acquire this? So this one, I was in a thing called a last man standing where you spend ten pounds to enter, and then you pick a football team, and if they win, they go through to the next. You go through to the next round, and then eventually there was like eighty people that entered. So hmm. the guy got eight hundred quid for it. So I then won, which people were not happy with. People were not happy with because I've, I've already. Had I mean, what are the odds of the, the guy that collects the shirts <laughs> winning this? How um, much is this? How much do these normally go for? I guess it varies on certain things. It's but. like, I think one of these sold for seven hundred the other month. Cool. So there's not many, is there? Like every no. so often one pops up. Yeah, exactly. Classic football shirts sold because there's different ones. This one's made in Ireland. Yeah. Classic football shirts sold one the other day for nine hundred and it went in like a minute. Jesus. So. So you had to. You've got another one, haven't you? I've got another one. Yeah, yeah. So you got the Van Basten one with twelve on the back. Yeah. yeah. This is no number though, isn't it? This no is just number. A, but it's um, still worth a bit. Huh? Yeah. Still worth um. You got, I got did you a good deal. Yes. <laughs> I, don't, I, I think the thing people, everyone's going to say, how much do you pay? How much do you pay? I'm not going to say. Yeah, don't say. But I got a very good deal, I think. Yeah. Personally. And then uh, you, you've confirmed it as well. So I'm happy with that. As he rocks his uh, Norway shirt. It's Interesting. very nice, isn't it? I like that one. I like that. Love happy that. days, happy days. Well, Ellis, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. I've drove all this way. I'm going <laughs> to take this shirt and then go home. <laughs> yeah, it's been lovely seeing you. And here it is in all its glory. It's genuinely wonderful. Beautiful and in such good condition. Unreal. Like, I genuinely can't see anything wrong with this shirt. I mean, there is, if we're being really picky, one slight bobble on the inside of the collar there. And that, that is pretty much it. Such great nick. Wonderful. Obviously, just getting into this, I feel like I've skipped a few levels in a computer game. But my word. Have I peaked? Possibly. Now, it's important to point out, with this shirt, there's actually different versions made. So my one doesn't look exactly the same as one like Ellis's. And I think Ellis's one is probably one of the more expensive ones. It's got the actual orange trim around it, which a lot of the fakes have as well. However, with that comes the number 12 on the back, Van Basten. That's what's called a Jazzpo version. My one was made in Ireland. There's a South American one, which I think is considered not as expensive and then are made in Europe too. I just got in touch with a guy called 343 through Ellis as well and if you look at his page you can tell he, he knows his stuff it's just full of just rare shirts. I wanted to send him a photo of it and just say you know what well, look is this actually legit because um you know I paid some money for it we don't want to be scammed and I'm sure Ellis wouldn't scam me either but it's just just knowing that peace of mind. He said it's 100% legit and actually growing in popularity people were starting to embrace the differences which is nice. Um, it's got a beauty like no other. Generally less sought after than the Euro, UK and Japan versions, but probably more sought after than the RG, which is obviously the South American one. But still very much sought after compared to most other kids. Then he also said, nice one for getting it, mate. Many collectors wait all their lives to get one and haven't made it. So yeah, like I say, skipped a couple of, uh, skipped a couple of levels. Just gonna look at this for a bit and then, um, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, yeah, these pants are hanging out. A bit big, aren't they? A little bit big. But can we just have a little moment to appreciate? Look at you, you little rock star. It's a sweet child of mine, Guns and Roses. Oh, 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 sweet child of mine. We have, we have got a feeling that his first word will be mummy. Mummy. Because he's got these he's, every, every so often he says ma 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 ma. So I think it could be mum. Which is, I think that's fair because Mia's first word was daddy. But then she progressed to loads of different words before mm. mummy eventually came out. We'll keep you updated on this. Um, garden situation. 
God, well, let's, let's talk about it originally because haven't, uh, we haven't heard your perspective. So I got this guy in, didn't I? And I was quite confident with the fact that he was just going to do it. And you, like from day two or three, was nagging me saying, what's going on? Why is this not happening? Da -da 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 -da. And I was like, come on, it's, it's taking time. We've hit some concrete. I think because my job is project management, mm. so I don't, I've got less tolerance than you. And you're also a nicer person than me, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was just, I could just see him taking the piss. Mm. He was just taking the piss. Mm. Um, there were there were moments when I was looking out there, and he was just standing there with a shovel having a fag, and I just think it's disrespectful. Mm. That was more than anything, and it's a guy that we knew. Mm. Look, you've got me started now. That was cool, rent, rent, rent. Um, but I was like in here, obviously trying to look after Zach and and Mia, and he would come in. He obviously preferred to talk to you. I think you was his contact, so he got on with things. I was getting pissed off in here, and then. You were the middleman, essentially, mm. weren't you? I was. Because I just said to you, I don't think I can say anything to this guy now because I'm so pissed off that I think I'm just going to be unnecessarily rude. So you went in with a measured approach and then it just ended up still being... Big row in the garden, bags. wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was very embarrassing. And he was just getting loud. And what I really didn't like was the point when he was threatening to come and cut up the decking and stuff. It yeah. just it went from it went zero to a hundred, didn't it? And he started making threats, and I just thought, we've got kids. Like, who do you think you are? He's got kids. Mm. You don't talk to people like that, number one. But also, you don't start threatening people's homes, mm. especially when we've got like two young children here. I just think he's an absolute tosser. And then he acted as if you, he was doing us a favour. Mm. He's so, oh. But there's a certain type of people, and I think calm is a bitch. But we're not the only ones. I've spoken to so many of my friends, and they've just they've all been screwed over in one way or another by trades. And I think, unfortunately, these bad tradesmen give them all a bad name. Mm. And there just, are good tradesmen. But... Well, what we find is the good tradesmen are the busy ones, yeah. and they're the ones you can't get hold of. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so then you're kind of picking from the bottom of the barrel, and we've learnt a very expensive lesson. Indeed. Indeed. Um, but we do have a new guy coming in, and he was supposed to come in yesterday. It's not that he didn't turn up, he, he did give us a text ahead of time. It's just been really bad weather, and he's busy, and he's sort of fitting us in as a favour. Yeah. Um, so the rain has delayed his other job, which means he's had to attend to that and get that done, and now we've been pushed back. So I'm really gutted, because um, tomorrow would have been the day where we'd have had this garden ready. Yeah. And it's not, and it's just another week. Well, we wouldn't have been out there anyway, shouldn't we? Yeah, it's raining, but it's just nice to know that the majority of it is done. Mm. So once he's done, it's just the grass that he's doing, and then you know kids can go out there and play, and mm. we can we can have barbecue. We just want a safe garden for the kids, really, don't we? Mm. It will it will come it will come. But yeah, just a just another little setback. But nothing's ever simple in the world of us, is it? No. Never. But never. I think that I felt embarrassed that we'd been screwed over like this. Mm. It's, it is almost embarrassing because it's like oh we should have known better and. And we almost didn't really want to say anything, but we kind of thought about it. And, and it does happen to so many people, doesn't it? So you yeah. have to be honest that maybe it's not a reflection on us. It is a reflection on him, whereas we were embarrassed as if it was our fault that we'd been made to be mugs. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to end this vlog with a, a thing, a bit of a garden for you. But unfortunately, no, it's all been put back. So we end on a bit of a downer. But um, maybe the next vlog, we'll have a, have a little one. The barbecue, more importantly, we, we, we need vlogs with barbecues in it, otherwise it's not a vlog. What I can tell you is it's right at the end there, just with the black cover on. In other news, it was Father's Day and um, I got a cake. Also, I got this card from her, it says, following in my daddy's footsteps. They did like a fireman theme at nursery. That's her foot and that's her welly, I think. Yeah, I'm not a fireman, so I think we'd need to, we might tell, maybe they look at me and think, yeah, he's a fireman. He's, he's got oh, the... you'd be good looking a fireman. Yeah. To daddy, happy Father's Day, thank you for everything you do. Love, from Mia, and I think really good writing at this age. <laughs> really good, really good, and obviously she can say the whole alphabet, she knows her letters and words, it's, it's fantastic, so, so clever. So we'll end it on there, thank you for coming, you are teething, you're teething, <laughs> bless you. So I'm going to end it here before uh, it, it kicks off, so uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one, bye.